Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Monday, July the 15th, 2024. So I put up a video on Saturday in which I made my forecast for the week ahead and I highlighted the fact that on Monday there was a conjunction between Mars and Uranus and this Mars and Uranus hit Donald Trump's Mars. So this Mars-Uranus conjunction on Monday, which is conjunct Algol, was square Trump's Mars. And as a result, I suggested that Trump should be careful about his security. And of course, I think five hours after I put the video up or something like that, uh, he was shot at this meeting, this rally or whatever it was in Pennsylvania. So I think that was an okay forecast, you know, Mars conjunct Uranus, conjunct Algol in the sky, hitting Trump's Mars, hitting Trump's Mars by square, um, was dangerous. Uh, and it's kind of incredible that he was hit in the ear, just two inches the other way, one inch the other way, even he would have potentially been dead. I suppose you could say that this is an example, maybe, of stochastic terrorism. I was talking about stochastic terrorism a few weeks ago. And so stochastic, the word stochastic relates to probabilities, and it represents uh, the probabilities of being a victim, perhaps of an assassination or, to, or a terroristic attack. And so the idea is that inflammatory language increases the chance, chances of terrorist attacks, and stochastic terrorism is something that has normally been focused on the victims of populist politicians, perhaps on the right, using inflammatory language. And as a result, people get uh, psyched up and, and do terrible things. I mean, for example, in the UK, during the campaign for the Brexit referendum, a member of parliament, her name was Jo Cox, was killed in her constituency surgery uh, by someone who was uh, not all there as far as I can see. And the argument was put forward that in a way the, the toxic anti-European anti Union right-wing uh, uh, statements by perhaps certain politicians were encouraging this environment. But really, it's not just a, a right-wing thing, stochastic terrorism. I mean, stochastic terrorism can work from a perspective of the, of the left as well. For example, in Europe, we've had all this sort of Ukraine stuff, and everyone had to support Ukraine. And you know, we've got this uh, really weird collective obsession with Ukraine in the West, and politicians using very strident pro-Ukraine language and this perhaps has created a toxic environment and that might be the environment in which uh, Robert Fietzo narrowly escaped assassination. I think that was in May. So Robert Fietzo was potentially a victim of stochastic terrorism. Now, the shooter was apparently a registered Republican, but nonetheless, we could say that Donald Trump is potentially a victim of stochastic terrorism. We have this environment where Trump is demonised, where people on the right are demonised, and that perhaps also creates a toxic environment. And I think that, as has been reported in many, in many places, uh, Joe Biden on July the 8th, I think that was you know, shortly after the, the debate, he said, uh, we're done talking about the debate. It's time to put Trump in a bullseye. Now, that may be an example of stochastic terrorism. Indeed, the whole furore of Trump being dragged through the law courts and people, yeah, demonising him and perhaps demonising what he represents, yeah, is an example of stochastic terrorism. So stochastic terrorism is a feature of both the, the left and the right. And I will be looking at... A number of charts in this video. I will be looking at the shooting of Trump 
one more time. Uh, sorry, I haven't even looked at it once yet. I've only sort of suggested that he was vulnerable to you know, an attack. And uh, I did suggest that he should watch out for his security. And so I'll be looking at his shooting in this video. And I'll be looking at his chart. I think I've got the chart for the shooter. I haven't got the time of the sh for the sh shooter's birth, but I think I've think I've got got a, got a chart there. And looking at the environment, things going on in Trump's chart. I'll also look at uh, the chart for Biden's inauguration because I think there may be some relevance there. But before I do that, I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for today, which is Monday. July the 15th, 2024. So here is actually, that's the chart of the shooter. I want to look at the chart of um, today. Right, there we have it. There is today, Monday, July the 15th, 2024. This chart, as usual, is set for noon in New York. And we can see that the moon is in the via combustor at noon at 12 degrees Scorpio. So it's not a great place for the moon. Uh, the moon is in Scorpio. It's in the sign of its fall and it's in the first part of Scorpio. So when the moon is in the first part of Scorpio, it is the via combustor. Like late, via combustor runs late Libra to early early Scorpio, 15 Libra, 15 Scorpio, to 15 Scorpio. So when the moon is in a via combustor, things can happen, things that we just weren't expecting. And we had this on, we had this on Sunday and it goes, runs through until Monday. So whatever your plans, always have a little bit of flexibility there because you might have to change them. Things might happen unexpectedly. It's not that these events are necessarily going to be bad, that they're going to derail everything. But if you want to achieve something, don't necessarily think you can achieve it in the way you had expected. So that's just something something to consider. And with the moon in Scorpio, I suppose it's a more intense and emotional and partisan day than usual. Partisan feelings are maybe running high, maybe not just in the United States. People have strong feelings. Um, and certainly with the attempted assassination of Donald Trump, uh, that elicits strong feelings. It, and it, we perhaps have a great sense of life and death, all of us. Things are intense. It, it's, it's not a light day, really, with the moon in Scorpio. Although, actually, the moon doesn't make any real aspects in Scorpio. Um, it it did make a square to Pluto just just as it went into Scorpio. It's okay. It's about to make a trine to. It's okay. Moon will be making a trine to Saturn late in the day. Might feel that especially if you're in the Americas, but. It's not a strongly aspected moon. So that's kind of interesting. You know, when I do my astrology for the 12 signs, I I normally rely quite heavily on lunar aspects, but we don't really have that. But we do have some other stuff. Of course, the most important aspect today is a conjunction between Mars and Uranus, and it is conjunct Algol. And this conjunction between Mars and Uranus as we have seen, is just not just a one-day wonder. We had this build-up to Mars-Uranus conjunction where things started to go wrong. Saturday, obviously, we had the attempted assassination on Donald Trump. And so it really was quite a difficult time. And, you know, we today... I believe we have the beginning of the Republican convention. So there's more stuff going on. Um, you can imagine what Trump's speech to the convention is going to be like. Um, it kind of has echoes, if you're in the, um, in the UK, of Margaret Thatcher's speech to the 
Conservative Party conference in, I think it was the end of 1984, when I think, it, what, how did it go? The IRA blew up the Grand Hotel in Brighton. I think it was the Grand Hotel. That was the name of the hotel uh, in Brighton in an attempt to kill Margaret Thatcher. Of course, that was a, a much more dramatic thing. A member of Parliament were killed. Um, one cabinet minister, Norman Tebbit, was... Um, seriously injured his wife was ended up in a wheelchair for the rest of her life and so of course margaret thatcher was able to make her speech at this conservative party conference and of course it was a, a riveting speech which really added to her power within the party and within the country so um i don't think i don't think trump will be making a speech on monday i don't quite know when is it Tuesday, Wednesday? I, I don't, I don't know. And of course, he'll be making his VP, that vice presidential pick. So that's uh, that's certainly something to look to, to look forward to, I suppose. But yeah, this Mars conjunct, Uranus conjunct, Algol, it is quite difficult, as we have already seen. But we have to remember when Mars Uranus made its conjunction on Saturday, that was you know it hadn't it had only just started. So there'll be more, maybe more things going on. And certainly Trump needs to carry on looking after his um, security. And I'm sure he will. But, you know, Mars and, Mars and Uranus are still square his Mars. But I suppose Trump will be using that energy now in a sort of a, a different way. And, you know, I mentioned, you know, be careful with your teeth. Um I think certainly at least one commenter on my on the, the channel has has been complaining about uh, tooth problem te teeth problems over the weekend. So you know don't you know don't do anything dangerous with your teeth. You know if you're eating anything, just make sure there aren't rocks in it, or you know bite down slowly. Um, you know, I was I was reminded of that yesterday. I was eating some cherries yesterday, and I sort of went down a bit too hard on a. Well, it wasn't. It was fortunately I was uh, wasn't too hard, but you know, hitting that stone of my teeth, and uh, then that was an immediate reminder. <laughs> We've got uh, Mars conjunct Algol. Remember Reinhold Eberton in his book on the fixed stars had a list of people who had teeth problems, who I think had planets on Algol. Uh, so algal can be associated with teeth issues, according to Reinhold Eberton. And we have Venus making a sesquiquadrate to Saturn. So there is Venus at 4.54 Leo, and there is Saturn at 19.13 Pisces. So Venus sesquiquadrate Saturn, I mean, it's not a great aspect, it can be about emotional inhibition, perhaps, or relationships can be problematic. It may be difficult to relate to people in a normal, emotionally fluent way. Perhaps people will be concerned about material detail. Um, and it's not just about relationships. It's Venus. It's about, it can be about money and aesthetics and what things look like. And I suppose with Mars conjunct Algol, Venus, sesquiquadrate, Saturn, I would have said, don't do anything drastic in a sort of a cosmetic sense. Uh, you know, probably don't have tattoos, for example. That would be a bad thing to do today. Well, I don't know if that's a good thing to do at all. But, um, you know, not a good idea to do anything dramatic in a cosmetic way. So that's Venus sesquiquadrate Saturn. And watch out with money, I think, with Venus sesquiquadrate Saturn. Mercury is also making a quincunx with a quincunx to Saturn, 150 degrees. So, you know, that is about how we try to communicate, how we try to get our message across Venus, Mercury, quincunx, Saturn. Um, we may find that something is just holding us back a little and... It's just a bit, a bit of a struggle to get our message across. Um, in fact, we can kind of see a lineup between the Venus, Venus's um, Sesu quadrate Saturn, Mercury is quincunx Saturn, and 
Venus and Mercury are around 15 degrees apart. So that's a kind of a, a semi-semi sextile because a semi -se a sextile is 60 degrees. Semi sextile is 30 degrees. A semi semi sextile would be 15 degrees. So there's a there's a creative challenge here. We're trying to be creative and to get our abilities and talents out into the open, and it is a bit of a struggle because Saturn is involved in this, and so it's going to be hard work, but not impossible. I think you know we can eventually get get our message across. It shouldn't be impossible. Now, as far as the midpoints are concerned, Venus and Saturn both occupy the Mars-Hades midpoint. The Mars-Hades midpoint, as you can imagine, Hades is, is a hypothetical planet, often connected with death and destruction, sometimes criminality. And I think you know, many of us are going to be just concerned about just how unpleasant things are. It is unpleasant out there. And we're aware of the violence that is just perhaps all around us. I'm not trying to make you paranoid, by the way. I mean, we're all concerned about this. And I'm not really necessarily saying anything personal. It's just more of a collective thing. So we perhaps have to watch out for that. Oh, I suppose while I'm at it, I might as well tell you what Vitter says. Um, so Alfred Vitter in the Rules of Planetary Pictures, he talks about the Mars, the Mars Hades midpoint. And he says, fatigue, weariness, atrocity, vulgar acts to cause damage, base services, um, sudden attacks, murder, homicide, unusual death, serious sickness, faulty or bad actions. So with Venus on the Mars Hades, um, he says, serving positions which lead to close acquaintance or close ties to blood relations. Uh, he certainly talks about immoral assault with injuries. He even relates it to abortion. So I mean, he sees Venus um, on Mar Mars Saturn, on the Mars Hades midpoint in quite a, a grim way. And then uh, Saturn on the Mars Saturn midpoint, activities connected at a loss, sorry, activities conducted at a loss, work without pay, death by murder or suicide or by crushing. So, um, I'm not predicting any of that, by the way. It just may be how it feels psychologically. In fact, I just had to pause the video just then and cut out a section because just as I was talking about all these grim things that Vitter was discussing in his book, I had a coughing fit, which, yeah, which I just cut out. So I don't know, it had an impact on me that, but don't worry about it too much. Remember that Vitter was writing his descriptions, in many cases, just after the First World War. And so the First World War was a, a very difficult time where people had horrific injuries. And so I'm not saying that we have to be worried too much about um, the Mars-Hades midpoint. But it just emphasises the point that Venus and Saturn on the Mars-Hades midpoint just can be a little bit uh, difficult and we just might be aware of the fact that it is a dangerous world out there. Turning to the heliocentric picture, let's uh, have a look if anything's going on there. So these are the positions for, t for today from a heliocentric perspective. And we notice that Mercury in Scorpio is trine Saturn. So Mercury trine Saturn, heliocentrically, it's a reminder that perhaps that we have to really focus on getting our ideas together. It's not easy, not easy at all. But if we put in the work, then I think that eventually we can start to 
not just get our ideas together, but also be able to communicate in an effective way. And at the same time, Venus is trying Mars. I mean, Venus has been trying Mars for quite a few days. So I think that that Venus trying Mars, you know, it's useful, it's helpful. It's not exact, but I think for many of us, it may help us in terms of how we relate to other people. It gives us a certain amount of charisma. So for people we need to be close to, want to be close to, I think that Venus Mars trine should be should be helpful. And then we have got Earth trine Earth trine Uranus. And I don't know about that Earth trine Uranus. I think Earth trine Uranus could stir things up. We already know that we're living in stressful times. And so with Earth trine Uranus, you know, you might say, oh, it's very creative. It cre- creates fun, you know, the possibility of fun events. They might be unexpected, but they could be fun. That's possible. That's one way Earth trine Uranus can work. Earth trine Uranus can also work by just events, maybe quite difficult events showing up that we just have to deal with. So it kind of reinforces what I was saying about the moon in the Via Combustor in early Scorpio, that we can't expect things to work out exactly in a way we had hoped, and we always need to have a standby plan. And Earth is square the Jupiter-Saturn midpoint. Uh, so Earth square the Jupiter-Saturn midpoint, that tends to be about the economic cycle, about, I suppose, the way the economy is going, perhaps the way society is going. You know, we're perhaps very aware of maybe what's going on in the markets and what they're telling us and you know, what people are saying about the economy, where it's where it's going. So that might be something we need to look at. And finally, Mars. Mars is on the Saturn-Uranus midpoint. It's conjunct with Saturn-Uranus midpoint from a heliocentric perspective. And I think with Mars conjunct the Saturn-Uranus midpoint, tension, violence, we live in a stressed out world, it's kind of more of the same. Saturn-Uranus as a pair is about tension, things getting really difficult. And Mars on the Saturn-Uranus midpoint um, just could be could be problematic and we're feeling perhaps a little bit nervous as if we just need to be careful but we need to be careful how we use our energy with Mars on the Saturn Uranus midpoint we just might get tense and perhaps use our energy in the wrong way but this is a heliocentric chart more about the collective and individuals more about what's going on out there in the outside world so that is the heliocentric picture and I'm now going to look at what's going on for the 12 signs. Uh, uh, so these are my forecasts for the 12 signs for today, which is Monday, July the 15th, 2024. Aries. It goes without saying, Aries, that it may be a difficult day because Mars is your ruler and it's conjunct Uranus. So we could say with Mars conjunct Uranus, exactly conjunct Uranus, also Mars conjunct Algol, that you do have to watch out and it is absolutely not a day for taking risks. So whatever you're planning today, Make sure it's safe. Don't be tempted to do dangerous stuff. It's not a day, for example, for playing with guns, for playing with chainsaws, for machinery you don't understand, or you're just not fully familiar with. And of course, if you're driving, be extra careful. And perhaps you should you should think, if you were to have an accident today, and I'm not saying you are going to have an accident today, but if you were to have one, why might that, that be the case? 
And it might be the case because you're feeling tense yourself, because what usually happens, what often happens, is that one's feeling irritated, angry, nervous, and one allows that anger, nervousness to be projected onto the outside world. So, you know, try to be calm. Try to have a slightly detached view to the world, because in that way you'll be putting out a calming energy and that should mean that uh, you're less at risk. But I, you know, I really must emphasize that today's going to be fine. I'm sure it's going to be fine. You know, my job as an astrologer is to just, in a way, is to look at things from the worst possible view. That's just what I have to do. So it would be remiss of me not to mention the downside of Mars conjunct Uranus. But I suppose there is an upside to Mars conjunct Uranus. You know, Uranus is, is conjunct Mars. Mars is your ruler. So you may be very energized. You may want to stir things up. You, want to, you may want to create waves. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you do try to make waves. But maybe it's okay. Maybe you're in a position, Aries, where you can get noticed. Maybe you feel that it is a time to be disruptive because there is no choice. And it's it's a way to create change. So if you feel, Aries, that other people are being complacent, they just think, uh, you know, it's the same old world, nothing is going on, then, you know, that's just annoying because things are going on. You know things are going on. You know what kind of world we're living in. And so you may be able to move things on, change change the focus. And so a dramatic intervention on your part, provided you know what you're doing, may actually be the right thing to do. So I'm not entirely advocating that you become a hermit, that you just withdraw from the whole world. It just may, there may be that you feel a certain obligation to, to perhaps do something. But still, Aries, do, do respect the power of your own feelings. You know, you have strong feelings today, really strong feelings. And those feelings could, you know, just so easily get out of control if they're not properly managed. And I remember when I was talking about the heliocentric picture, Aries, I was, was mentioning the fact that Mars is conjunct the Saturn-Uranus midpoint. Uh, so from the Sun's perspective, Mars is conjunct the Saturn-Uranus perspe- Uranus midpoint. And that may be about your tension. And just, you know, you feel something has to happen. Um, so you have to work out how, you, how you're going to deal uh, with that um, with that energy. As far as relationships are concerned, Venus is making a sesquipodrate to Saturn. So Venus, of course, rules Libra, your opposite sign. So with Venus, sesquipodrate, Saturn, it is possible that some people are feeling a bit under the weather. They might be feeling sorry for themselves. They might not be their usual selves. And they may even be having quite dark thoughts about what's going on around them. And so, Aries, perhaps you need to step in, see what you can do. As I say to, to Arians, you're very good at saying the right thing. You have this just this confidence about you. You say the right thing. And you can make things a whole lot better for people when you when you want to. So uh, maybe there can be a little bit of healing there, and that's that's something you perhaps can do. Uh, and taking advantage of the fact that perhaps you know you know Venus heliocentrically Venus is trying Mars heliocentrically. Actually, Venus is also trying Charon, but with that Venus trying Mars. Maybe you can reach out and make someone feel better. And actually, we've talked about tension and how you could 
raise raise the pressure. You could, in some respects, reduce the pressure. If you focus on one person and you say, well, you need to make this person feel better about themselves and about the world, I think that's something you can do. Taurus. Obviously, Taurus, the big event is a conjunction between Mars and Uranus taking place in your sign. So this conjunction between Mars and Uranus certainly energizes you. And this is particularly the case if you're a, if you're a late Taurus, you know, whatever you're focusing on, whether it's, you know, the, de the degree of your ascendant, the degree of your sun, the degree of your moon, if it's late Taurus, then that's going to be particularly strong. But, you know, I think it's all Tor all Taurians are going to be affected by this with this Mars Uranus conjunction. I think that you're going to want things to happen. I don't think that you're going to be entirely content with the status quo. And you have to be careful because whatever actions you take could be exaggerated by this Mars Uranus conjunction. So that means, Taurus, you know, you need to tread carefully here. Um, how much energy do you want to put into something? And what is motivating your energy? And it's possible that you're being motivated by anger. And anger can be difficult. And also, it's not just your anger, it's someone else's anger. Because Mars is ruler of Scorpio, your opposite sign. And you've also got the moon is currently in Scorpio. So someone else could be very angry or annoyed about something and you might feel that and that could, could cause a fair amount of disruption so Taurus you you do have to be careful how you go on a more positive note Venus from a heliocentric perspective is making a trine to Mars and it's making a trine to Charon. Just remember, these are, these are heliocentric planets. But with Venus trine Mars, Venus trine Charon, there is an opportunity there for you to be friendly and helpful. And perhaps you can do a little bit of healing with Venus trine the Charon, you know, that heliocentric car has trine between Venus and Charon. It's, it's very collective, but somehow you may be in touch with it. So if you feel that someone needs needs a bit of help, I, I think that is that is help that you can offer. But it is important that you have confidence in yourself because... You know, Venus is the ruler of Taurus. And Venus at the moment is making a sesquiquadrate to Saturn. So with Venus sesquiquadrate Saturn, uh, you, you may feel that there isn't much of a point of doing anything, at least to begin with. It's just, just negativity. That's what it is. Feeling that perhaps you better just do nothing. It's all a waste of time. And you might have just negative feelings about the short-term future in general. I think it is just important you snap out of that. It's not going to last very long, this Venus, Cecil Quadrate, Saturn. And you perhaps need to focus on something else. I mean, okay, or you can be constructive about the Venus Sesu Quadrate Saturn. Saturn is about hard work. Perhaps you have to really push it. And yeah, you might not get results to begin with, but if you keep moving in the same direction, I think you will get these results. And it could be about 
the struggle to be creative in your own way, according to your own rules. And that's because we've got a 15 degree aspect between Venus and Mercury. Yeah, Venus is your ruler and it is 15 degrees away from Mercury. So we have a semi-semi-sextile. Remember, sextile is 60 degrees, semi-sextile is 30 degrees. A semi-semi-sextile is 15 degrees. I, I, I don't think I've seen astrologers describe a 15 degree aspect as a semi-semi, as a semi-semi-sextile. But that semi-semi-sextile is about the struggle to bring something out into the open. And it is about your creativity, explaining your creativity, explaining to people why you are clever and why you need to be taken seriously. And I think that that is perhaps something that you de do need to focus on today. Gemini. Gemini, I'm not sure if you're necessarily in a great mood at the moment. Um, I think, Gemini, you just feel that there are things that I suppose have to be done. You don't want to do them. You know, Geminis do get bored quite quickly. And I think that today there may be a sense of boredom. Boredom that is particularly caused by what's in front of you and what you have to do. There are things you know you have to do, but you don't want to do them. And there may be a certain resistance on your part. You might want to delay things. Um, why do today what you can put off until tomorrow? But I wouldn't advocate delay. If something needs to be done, then I would just suggest you, you go and do it. And matters probably aren't helped by the fact that Mercury, which is your ruler, is making a quincunx to Neptune, 150 degrees, sorry, not Neptune, Saturn. Uh, Mercury is making a 150 degree aspect to Saturn. So a lot of things out there are hard work. And I think this would especially apply if you happen to be working today. Um, if you've, you know, if, if, if you've got a job or you're running a business, um, or perhaps if you're just having to deal with society in general, that Saturn represents um, things which just are difficult, which are slowing you down, and you just find that you you can't tell people what's on your mind, and your thoughts might just seem a bit sluggish, but you know you've got to do it. But I really would recommend that you persevere, and I'm talking to myself here because I'm a Gemini, there are a couple of things I have to do and I absolutely don't want to do them, but uh, I do know I have to do them. I think a lot of Geminis are like that at the moment. So that is Mercury, Mercury, Quincunx, Saturn. And work, work at it. It may feel that you're not accomplishing much, but I think that it is worth the effort. Cancer. The moon is in Scorpio. Uh, doesn't matter where you are, what your time zone is, it's in Scorpio. Uh, yeah, a lot of people may be complaining about the fact that the moon is in Scorpio, but I think from your perspective, I don't think it bothers you, the fact that the moon is in Scorpio. I think that the moon in Scorpio allows you to do your own thing in your own way without necessarily having to address anyone. And so in that sense, maybe you don't have to worry too much about other people. Uh, it's all on your terms. Now, it's not exciting, I don't think. Now, there is a lot of excitement in general today. But if you're a Cancerian, you may be slightly separate from it all. And so that might give you an advantage. And 
you could just generally sort things out in your own way and you know i suppose as the day progresses particularly if you're in the in the americas the moon starts making a trine to saturn and i think that that trine to saturn is actually quite useful you can be organized you can be disciplined and you can stabilize things so if things have been a little bit up in the air unstable now's the time to bring everything down to earth now if you're not in the americas particularly if you're in australia or new zealand well this is perhaps more about tomorrow tuesday but you're still feeling that moon trine saturn moon is in scorpio saturn is in pisces the moon and saturn are just working together very nicely and so that gives you a bit of stability and indeed you can be perhaps an island of stability in a sea of chaos and you know that sea of chaos is you know other people trying to work out all these serious aspects like you know mars conjunct uranus with yeah it's a serious it is a very serious aspect that mars conjunct uranus but i don't think it has a direct impact on you so you're perhaps perhaps spared that but maybe you could see it in others perhaps you know, look at how your friends are behaving look at how other people are behaving they are behaving perhaps in a rather chaotic even a little bit traumatized way perhaps they're affected by the news more than you are and i suppose you can perhaps get things in perspective you know one final point about relationships with this moon trine saturn moon trine saturn should help relationships and as the day progresses and possibly as you move into tomorrow um, tuesday depending on your time zone i think that relationships can be stabilized and you and someone else can realize that you've got common ground and perhaps if there have been recent misunderstandings they can be resolved leo you are feeling that it is a difficult world and the difficulties of the world may actually be reflected in everyone around you people are difficult and people are troubled and they are perhaps concerned about quite serious things you know they may even be a little bit paranoid some people they may think that things could go very wrong very quickly i don't think that you need to be caught up in all of this and perhaps leo your job is to have if you possibly can to have a reassuring influence yes you know some people just are troubled and you have your own fears i suppose but i th- think that you can have a, me- a measure of detachment you know the moon is sorry the sun your ruler is in cancer it's got you know you, there's another week or so before the sun moves into leo so in that last week you may be able to be detached you know perhaps as sorting out your resources in preparation for the sun changing sign and yeah you don't necessarily have to be entirely involved with other people and their concerns and you know with the moon in scorpio moving towards a trine to saturn i think that uh, stability is going to be quite important to you yet i think you could be affected by this mars conjunct uranus so this mars conjunct uranus it takes place in taurus and taurus is a high profile sign for you and taurus may be about your working environment if you're working if 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 you have a job or perhaps if you have if you have a business so if you are going into work today 
don't expect things to run entirely smoothly. Things could happen. People could be behaving in a strange way and there just could be events which maybe you're not fully prepared for. It could also be about people trying to assert themselves in a way that is a bit clumsy. I suppose that could be you, could be someone else, but that Mars-Uranus conjunction does need, does need to be treated with a certain amount of caution, especially in a high-profile environment. And that needn't be just at work. It can be just when you are going about your daily business in society, you're out there, you're getting noticed, and things might just happen. So you might also want to consider how you are projecting yourself. And I know I've been quite negative about this Mars conjunct Uranus, and it's, it, particularly as it's conjunct Algol. But it may actually have a positive side for you, Leo. And if you want to make an impact, if you want people to notice you, then I think they will notice you. That, of course, involves a certain element of risk because you're having to turn up the volume on something. But if you want to get noticed and if you want to get people to stop in their tracks, then I think that that is something that you can certainly do. So um, you have to consider the situation and you have to consider what behaviour is, is actually appropriate. But Leo, if you want to be comfortable today, okay, maybe you don't want to be challenged. If you want a quiet day, then I suppose you can have a quiet day because the moon is in Scorpio, low profile sign from a Leo view, it's trine Saturn. So if you don't want to be noticed, then perhaps Leo you don't have to be noticed. So in that sense, Leo, I think today you do have a certain amount of choice, but still you have to think about obligation. What are you obliged to do? What do you feel it is necessary to do? It may be okay to do nothing, but it may be you have to get attention and force people to take something seriously. But I suppose it's your choice. Virgo, you feel that you've got something to say. That's how it feels. And you would like to say something. But are you actually going to be able to say something in a way that is effective? I think the answer may actually be no. So... If you are really keen to communicate, you may have to perhaps change your plans and perhaps leave it until later in the week if you've got something to say. Because if you try to communicate today, particularly on a verbal level, it just might not work out. The words might not come out right or you might feel you're being ignored, or perhaps other people are going to have more important things to think about. At least that's how they might feel. And matters are certainly not helped by the fact that Mercury, which is your ruler, is sextile, sorry, is quincunx Saturn. So Saturn is in Pisces, your opposite sign, and so Saturn may be someone who doesn't take you seriously, doesn't respect you, criticizes you. And so you try to say what's on your mind, you're trying to communicate, but you're not really getting much support. And so if it really is important for you to say something, to deliver a message, you perhaps even need to think about how you're going to do it the logical way is probably not going to be the best way. The 
the words you use may not be appropriate. And maybe you need to think about other ways of communicating, like with your feelings. The moon is in Scorpio. The moon, the moon in Scorpio is directly relevant to how Virgoans communicate. So perhaps through the power of your feelings, you can get your message across and people will understand you without you having to say anything. Maybe it's just the vibes that you're emanating or, you know, perhaps perhaps body language. So that's perhaps how you should um, try to have an impact. But I don't think that it's going to be easy. And so in that sense, it may be a good idea to just bide your time. And I should also say that you need to look at other people and how they are behaving. I think that some people are just holding back. They are delaying. They are happy where, that, where they are. They don't want to move. And so if you're trying to persuade someone to do something or you're trying to make a suggestion, it will be like you're talking to a brick wall. And the reason you're talking to a brick wall is because the other party doesn't like your message especially if you're making suggestions because if you're making a suggestion you're asking someone to do something and right now there are people out there who really don't want to do anything so your suggestions are perhaps the last thing they want to hear so that's another good reason for perhaps holding back now, as far as the Mars-Uranus conjunction is concerned, you know, I know I'm talking about it a lot. I don't think that the Mars-Uranus conjunction on Algol has a direct impact on you. It's probably nothing much you have to worry about. Uh, it might have, some, it might be a cause for worry if you're doing large-scale traveling. Uh, not perhaps a good idea today to doing, you know, big traveling, you know, hundreds, thousands of miles. That might not work out. Uh, if you're communicating with people who are a long way away, you know, perhaps the other side of the world, the other side of the continent, then that might be asking for trouble. Um, different perspectives, uh, getting angry about various arrangements. So I would suggest that you keep it simple and that you focus on what's right in front of you rather than worrying about what's happening on the other side of the continent or the world or the other side of the world. Because in a way, the longer the distance, the greater the aggravation. Libra. I feel a bit bad because... I'm being a little bit negative to a lot of the signs. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being wonderfully positive. But, you know, I do think there are difficult things going on at the moment. And in terms of your sign, we've got Venus, which is your ruling planet, is sesquiquadrate Saturn. And... I'm afraid that Venus Sesquic Quadrate Saturn is not exactly a bundle of laughs. Saturn is perhaps restricting you, and perhaps you are aware of the limitations being placed upon you. And yeah, you're not as free as you'd like to be. And yes, there are things you want to do, but somehow you're not quite able to do them in the way you'd like to. And Perhaps it's just a question of accepting the situation. You know, you can't have a situation where, you know, every day is wonderful and today just might be a little bit difficult. And, you know, you, I understand that you've got things you want to do. You've got hopes and you, you're you hoping that the future is going to be great and you there are things you would like to happen absolutely reasonable but circumstances are just preventing it from happening 
and it may be libra that you just have to address yourself to just certain boring realities that just have to be dealt with there's nothing nothing really that can be done about it so perhaps what you need is to to be good humored but also to perhaps be somewhat stoical just realizing there are some things that can't be helped not make a fuss about things and do what's expected of you and i suppose i could say grin and bear but it will be okay provided you you know you you do what you know you have to do and at the same time there's no need to push it i'm not suggesting that you work particularly hard in fact you shouldn't work particularly hard because actually libra i don't think that you've got a great deal of energy at your disposal and you know what energy you have needs to be used carefully focusing on the areas that that matter now it's not all bad certainly from a heliocentric perspective so if you look at the heliocentric chart venus is making a trine to mars and it's making a trine to charon so venus trine mars actually gives you a certain amount of charisma you can get noticed and if you're honest and down to earth i think people are going to like you also with venus trine mars sorry venus trine charon if you take the view that charon is the maverick you can do something that is slightly different that's slightly unusual but if possible don't do it in a way that is in the glare of public attention it's it's not about trying very hard to be different from the, for the sake of it you want to do things your own way be creative in your own way and that's you know that is something that you can can really make some progress on and so do consider your creativity even though it is quite a difficult day i think that if you marshal your resources properly you can accomplish a fair amount and of course venus trine charon does also give you the opportunity to make someone else's day better if someone is uh, in pain or under stress of course i'm not talking about anything really serious or clinical or anything like that but if someone is feeling rather negative about the world uh, then with venus trine charon you can have a healing impact though libra when dealing with other people be a little careful because the main aspect today is of course this mars conjunct uranus conjunct algol of course mars is ruler of aries so mars has an impact on relationships so don't be surprised if some people behave in a way which is a bit hasty and they do things that you weren't expecting and i suppose in extreme situations their behavior might be out of order and you have to decide how to respond you, you know you want to stay away from dangerous people on the other hand if someone's about to do something careless or risky or reckless then perhaps you can consider to what extent you can have a restraining influence maybe nothing you can do but maybe something you can do can avoid i won't say a disaster but can help someone avoid maybe a mishap or even just an embarrassing mistake so overall libra do consider the impact you can have on the world around you and on the people around you um in certain cases you may not be able to have any impact at all but you need to evaluate the situation i don't think that you're palace 
if you handle things in the right way, I think you will be listened to. And I think that you have some ability to change the course of events. Scorpio. Well, we can't deny the fact that Mars is conjunct Uranus. And Mars is also on the fixed star Algol. And Algol is a star that has quite a gruesome reputation in terms of disaster and negative events. But I don't want to scare you. Um, Mars does go on to Algol every now and then. It's not really the end of the world, usually. So, Scorpio, what I would suggest today is that you are simply careful and you stay out of trouble and i think that this is you something you can do because you know scorpio is a very sensitive sign it's got powerful feelings it's got a powerful sense of the way things are going and with this mars conjunct Uranus, you, you can see how things can go wrong. And you may be able to see how things could go wrong before it happens. And so if you have a bad feeling about something, and if you think that something is a bad idea, then trust your feelings and tell people that this is not the right thing to do. Uh, hopefully they will listen to you. And, you know, don't allow yourself to be steamrolled by anyone's overconfidence. Yeah, some people are going to be overconfident, but you have to stand up for what you believe in and what you believe to be the case. You may be afraid of making a fool of yourself, but Scorpio, in this case, I think you, you know you're right. And I'm not saying 100% you're right, but I think there's a good chance you're right. And so, so Scorpio, do, do make sure that you are listened to. Now, in terms of the way you're feeling with Mars conjunct Uranus, I suppose Uranus could make you feel a little bit impulsive and impatient. There are things you want to do. You want to move forward quickly. Uh, you don't want to hang around doing nothing. And I think this impulsiveness could be quite dangerous and your impulsiveness could get you into trouble. And things are particularly difficult if you're actually feeling angry or annoyed. If you're feeling angry or annoyed, this could be transmitted into your material environment and that could lead to problems. And... You know, with I should also say that you know the Mars conjunct Uranus, yeah, it's taking place in Taurus, which is your opposite sign, and because it's taking place in Taurus, there's just some danger that you follow the crowd and don't ask enough questions, which is kind of what I've already said, but I just wanted to to make it very clear you understand that. It is not a time to be following the crowd. It might feel like they're being the right thing to do. It might feel that there's no need to ask questions. It's all, there's always a need to ask questions. It may be difficult to ask these questions, but you know you have to make sure that people know what they're doing. And I think in many cases they don't know what they're doing. And in terms of your daily life, it goes about saying that you should not take any risks. Don't do anything you don't understand. Don't mess around with things that are dangerous, activities that are dangerous, equipment that is dangerous, tools that are dangerous. You can leave that for later or you can perhaps leave it for the experts. Well, okay, if you are an expert, then that may be a different matter. But uh, overall, Scorpio, I would just recommend that you play it safe. Now, as far as other people are concerned... Venus rules Taurus, which is your opposite sign. And Venus is not in a great position either in some respects because Venus is making a 
sesquiquadrate to Saturn, 135 degree aspect, three eighths of a circle. So with Venus sesquiquadrate Saturn, some of the people around you, they, they just feel that something's holding them back and they're feeling a bit nervous about it and they may be feeling a bit down about the fact that they're being held back and they might have a somewhat negative view of the immediate future and you have to work out how best to deal with it. I think you possibly can do something to cheer them up um, and it's all about using your feelings really trying to understand another person try to trying to understand why they might be unhappy scorpios can really get to the bottom of things they're good at that and so perhaps that's that is something you 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 need to consider another aspect um, of venus Assess with quadrate Saturn, and I'm, you know, I'm sorry to sound a bit negative here, but it may be about self perception. And being assessed with quadrate Saturn, you may perhaps be feeling rather negative about yourself and how you are occurring to other people. Um, and that might be about being very self conscious. I would recommend that you try to understand what this self-consciousness is about. I don't think there's any need to be self-conscious, actually. Um, it's all in the head. And in fact, your one aspect going on today, it's a heliocentric aspect, is Venus's trine Mars. Now, this Venus trine Mars has been around for a few days, but it's still very much in orbit. Now, that's right. Venus trine Mars is by the way, a heliocentric aspect, not a geocentric aspect. Um, geocentrically, Venus is not trying Mars, but heliocentrically it is. And I think with that heliocentric trying to Mars, that does give you an opportunity to um, be able to be actually very effective when in terms of relating to other people you have to you have to get it right your first attempts might not work but you know the cosmos has an idea about how best to deal with the people around you once you get it right it's about just listening to your feelings really listening not just to your own feelings but to the collective to the collective unconscious there's a way to deal with people with that venus trine mars and there's a way to relate and once you get it right, I think that the day will sort of click and you'll understand that, yes, it's a difficult day. It's not just for you, for, for everyone, but there's a right way for managing it. And there's a right way for managing all the various characters you have to deal with over the course of the day. And once you get it right, then I think things should start to run relatively smoothly. Sagittarius. I would suggest, Sagittarius, that it may be a time when you need to hold back a bit. I mean, I think everyone, to an extent, needs to hold back. Because it is a difficult day. Um, if one takes wild and crazy initiatives, uh, they're likely to backfire, or at least they could backfire. So... Don't feel obliged. There's absol absolutely no ne no need to feel obliged. And if you don't want to do something, then you probably shouldn't do it. But on the plus side, yes, it's true that, that, that there are difficult things happening today. You know, we've, I've talked about Mars conjunct Uranus. I've talked about Venus sesquiquadrate quadrate Saturn. But I don't think any of this stuff really impacts you directly. And therefore, Sagittarius, you can have a certain aloofness. You can be above it all and also 
see things in perspective. And one thing in particular that you can see in perspective is the way people interact. You know, people are going to be interacting in a somewhat strange way. Um, perhaps they're going to be too hasty. Perhaps they're going to use the wrong language. But you're in a fortunate state in the sense that you're not going to be taking much personally. You're, you're able to get a perspective. And that is really valuable, getting a perspective, because a lot of people out there are finding it very difficult to get a perspective. They just see it as just being a problematic time with problematic events and getting a clear perspective is just hard work. But you, Sagittarius, you understand things in a way that other people don't. And that might mean that you are actually a useful person to have around. Because one aspect that may impact you indirectly is a quincunx between Mercury and Saturn. So Mercury is ruler of Gemini, which is your opposite sign. And so with Mercury, quincunx, Saturn, um, Mercury is perhaps representative of another person. Could be a partner, close friend, someone you have to have a lot of dealings with. And so that Mercury, quincunx, Saturn may indicate someone who is not very optimistic is just not feeling great about what's going on and has or is in the process of creating a lot of negative narratives and Sagittarius you, you understand this you can see it unfolding before your eyes and if you see another person being negative or giving evidence of being negative you know you can tell negativity perhaps not just by what people say but what by what people don't say perhaps even by the through the silences and so you can understand this and perhaps you can intervene and uh, just by saying the right thing you can just shift things just a little bit and in the process I think that you can you can make a big difference and I should uh, you know also say that you may find that if you are working today if you happen to be working today um, maybe you're not maybe you're retired I don't know what your circumstance is but the people around you at work, you know, employers, workmates, they're not going to be on good form. I don't think they're going to be in a position to do anything amazing. They might be pretty negative. Um, I don't think they're going to be particularly good at dealing with new ideas they kind of know there are people out there they know that new ideas are important that they know the future is right is upon us the future is always upon us but they're not people are not very good at dealing with the future whereas you Sagittarius you understand the future you understand where things are going but there are just people especially as I said especially at work who just don't understand where things are going and you may look may look around you if you're going to work or I, I suppose if you have your own business I suppose of course you have more control if you have your own business but you may look around you and you think we're stuck in the past a bit here and we need to move on now if it's your own show if it's your own business then of course there are things you can do to start to address the future but if you're just a humble employee sorry I didn't use mean to use humble that's a bit by humble and that was the wrong word to do to use but if you're just an employee with limited amount of power you perhaps have to just accept that situation people are not addressing the future as um, well as they as well as they should be finally Sagittarius I suppose I have to say something about health um, this Mars Uranus conjunction is in a sector of your chart relating to uh, to your health um, 
it's, it's in Taurus. Again, I, I don't want to scare you. I'm just saying this because I have to. Just don't do anything that might undermine your health. And, you know, so take it easy. Um, in terms of what you're doing physically, you know, think about it beforehand. Don't just rush into something physically. Oh, you might think something needs to be sorted out, so you're not going to worry about your health and well-being. No, no, that's that's not the approach you should take. Your health comes first. Um, that That's important. And in terms of vulnerabilities, you know, I've already mentioned Sagittarius that, you know, Mars Uranus is in Taurus, which is uh, could be a connection there with the throat. So be careful what you're what you're breathing in. Uh, if you're a smoker, well, it's probably time to give up, isn't it? Um, I would say if you haven't already. And I mentioned in a general sense that Mars conjunct algal can be about issues with your teeth. So what I said about, you know, us, everyone having to be careful of what they eat, not eating hard things, that, you know, breaking teeth and all that kind of thing. Just be careful about what you're consuming and as, as you know, I, I mentioned that everyone should watch out for rocks in their food, for example. Uh, yeah, and that includes you. Uh, so do watch your health. But I must emphasize, I'm not trying to make you paranoid. I'm just, just looking at things from a worst case scenario. And I'm, I'm sure things will be fine. Capricorn. You may be able to utilize some of the the difficulties and the uncertainties happening today somehow you may be able to harness it i i because i don't think that you're especially worried about what's happening right now i think that you're perhaps less worried than other people maybe it's because Capricorn is a down-to-earth sign and you're able to just get things in perspective. So that is possible. Um, you always knew that the world was unstable. You always knew that, that uh, things could go wrong. So if things are going wrong today in the world, is there a surprise? Not really. Um, and so I think the fact that you have a perspective does kind of put you in a good position. And you may, in a strange way, see a certain beauty in what's happening around you. A, a sense that everything is fitting together. And it may in a perverse way, be almost life-affirming. Maybe you just feel, well, you know, you, you knew. And some Capricorns may be able to harness this, you know, harness other people's uncertainty to put themselves in a good position. And I don't think you should be guilty about this or feel selfish about it. Uh, it's kind of good to be vindicated. But at the same time, Maybe because you understand what's going on, you are in a position to make things better, and this can put you in a position where you get where you get trust and respect. Though, don't take it too far because one aspect we've got today is a sesquiquadrate between. Venus and Saturn and of course Saturn is your your planet it's your ruler so if, if Saturn is sesquicodrate Venus that might be the kind of impact you're having on other people and the, uh, the kind of impact you're having on other people might be quite heavy um, yeah sure you might be respected but at the same time you may find that you're 
quite rest- restrictive. You're a restrictive influence. When people get close to you, their options start to narrow. They have to start doing things your way. Now, I suppose that might be a good thing. But you do always have to ask yourself, what is someone trying to say? What are they trying to express? And are they able to express that in your presence? And I think you should be more encouraging. Give people a space in which to tell you what's on their mind. Um, You don't want to be in a situation where they're perhaps somewhat um, afraid of you, afraid of how you're going to respond. Uh, So you can afford to be a little bit more relaxed, I think. Though, continuing on the theme of other people, the moon is making a trine to Saturn. Now, this trine to Saturn is maybe more of a feature of late this evening, even into tomorrow. But no doubt about it, you know, the moon is at at noon in New York, was at 12 Scorpio. The moon's next major aspect well its next major aspect well it makes a it's aspecting actually a square to mercury and then it's making a trine to saturn but i think it's a trine is perhaps more important in this instance and so moon trine saturn is that through your level-headed but non-judgmental approach you can get people to trust you people need trust because Right now, there isn't much trust around and you are someone that can be trusted. And so with this moon trine Saturn over the next 24 hours, I think you can, well, when I say next 24 hours, I mean, I'm talking about Monday, Tuesday, Um, over over Monday and Tuesday, I think you can um, get people not just to trust you, but also to listen to you. Uh, but of course don't be too judgmental but I think that today if you handle things right Capricorn I think you can be a force for good Aquarius you know Aquarius that it is a day when things are a little bit unstable but at the same time you do understand that there are things that need to be done and in your own way I think Aquarius you're quite ambitious I think these perhaps these ambitions have sort of been brewing over the weekend and now you hit Monday you're thinking well there are there are things you want to do and you want to notch up a few achievements I think you can be successful today provided you are a little bit flexible because things aren't going to work out exactly as you expect. Things are going to happen. There are going to be events which may force you to change your change your plans. You also have to consider other people. You know, people can change their minds. You know, they were happy to do something last week, but this week, maybe not. Something's changed. So you need to have the flexibility to deal with alterations and it's the flexibility that will make the difference I think between success and failure but can you be flexible I mean Aquarius has a reputation for being a fixed sign for being quite set in its ways moon is in Scorpio is in a fixed sign so there is a danger that you aren't flexible and of course that would spoil things and inflexibility is not going to put you in a good light you know if you are very determined to do something and you do not listen then you're not going to make yourself popular indeed people might regard you as being someone who is just difficult to deal with and that could be disruptive in terms of in terms of relationships and you know we shouldn't forget that saturn which is your ruler saturn in pisces is quincunx mercury and mercury is in leo and leo is of course your opposite sign so with with saturn 
quincunx mercury there's just a danger that you close things down you know people are trying to say something but you just close them down you, maybe you don't even recognize that someone is trying to say something you're perhaps thinking about something else someone is trying to get your attention and you just don't notice so aquarius I would suggest that you make a special effort to be aware. Um, listen to your feelings. Be aware about what's going on around you. And it is actually through this awareness that you can actually get things done and you can start to notch up some achievements. Lack of, a, lack of awareness could just spoil everything. One other thing I should mention is the fact that, of course, we do have this conjunction between Mars and Uranus on Algol. Very, very difficult energy. And this conjunction is taking place in Taurus. And from an Aquarian view, Taurus is a, is a low-profile sector of the chart, often connected with home and family. And... There could be things going on in your home which need your attention and you sh should be looking to de-escalate things wherever possible. I mean, I suppose it depends on what your home environment is, 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 is like. Maybe it's just you. But if you've got family members around, then, you know, you, then it may be necessary to de-escalate or perhaps someone is being very willful they want things done their way and are not prepared to compromise and that's just something you just have to have to manage and work out using whatever sensitivity you have to to deal with the issue and it may just be about things you know, Mars Uranus conjunction is in Taurus. It's just the objects around you, kitchen appliances, furniture, whatever. Things could be a problem. Uh, maybe it's just not people. Things being put in the wrong place. Think things tripping you up. Things going wrong. Again, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just suggesting that you just have a respect for your material environment at home you don't assume that things are just going to work you don't assume that things are going to be in the right place and you anticipate problems before they happen whether it's members of your family or whether it's where a table has been placed something left on the floor where it shouldn't have been or something like that because when things and people get misplaced, then the risk of accident, whatever that accident might be, the risk of accident does start to increase. But don't worry, Aquarius. I'm sure you've got the situation under control. Pisces. Do be careful what you say, Pisces. You know, there is this Mars-Uranus conjunction at the moment. And this Mars-Uranus conjunction may encourage you to um, perhaps say things which you almost immediately regret. You know, Mars-Uranus is about, can be about making mistakes. And in your case, it could be about making verbal mistakes. You say something, it seems the right thing to say at the time. That five seconds later, the time has changed. So do be careful what you say, um, because it's, it's actually possible to cause um, a lot of damage very quickly. Also, consider your relationship with your community with this Mars-Uranus conjunction. There may be things going on in your community or perhaps with your neighbours which are perhaps unexpected, may, may be difficult. 
It may be you and other members of your community don't get on with each other. Or it may not be about you. It may be about other members of your community having disagreements. So look around you, you know, wherever you live um, and, and look look out for how things might go wrong and people just uh, getting annoyed with each other and you know try not to fall into the trap of getting annoyed with someone else particularly a neighbor you know it, it might be unnecessary there might be some petty dispute um, or indeed it may be that you're doing something that is annoying a neighbor and you don't actually know you're doing it so do think about it and something you do you know you just do it in a hasty way you're not really thinking but then you do do it and under the surface you're causing aggravation and that aggravation could flare up additionally be careful when you are traveling particularly short distance traveling you know traveling you know you might think it's nothing perhaps to drive a couple of miles or maybe even just to walk around the corner but short distance traveling can be an event it can be an event where things can go wrong so if you are doing any short-term traveling be extra aware don't be complacent you know if you're driving don't assume that you know the roads don't assume that you know the road conditions even if you've been driving the same stretch of road for <laughs> for decades things can still happen so be careful as you make your short distance um, journeys okay I might apply to long distance journeys as well but i think it's going to be more about short the shorter distances so just be careful how you go and just do not make assumptions i think that is um, that is very important and still Pisces you know I know that Pisces is supposed to be a mutable sign but it's a sign that is quite flexible um, enjoys variety can deal with lots of different things I think today though Pisces you're a little more set in your ways than usual and that might be a problem when dealing with other people it's like you have expectations and you expect other people to fit in with these expectations and you may not even know that you have expectations it may be a very unconscious thing that you're like channeling people to behave in a particular way and they just might feel a bit constrained and uh, you know there may be someone close to you who you're not not really respecting perhaps as much as you should do uh, so you know try to be aware of how you are occurring to other people uh, though on the plus side i know that pisces is a water sign it has a reputation for being quite emotional and particularly now with moon and scorpio but at the same time you are capable of a certain amount of objectivity if you make an effort you know, make a real effort to be obje objective especially when you are dealing with groups of people if you happen to be dealing with groups of people when you're dealing with you know you know all the people you know and how these people relate to each other you can actually if you make the effort objectively understand the way people are coming together and this can allow you to be a force for good because you can understand who gets on with who who doesn't get on with who and in your own way you can be if not a matchmaker at least a peacemaker again if you make the effort you know if you're not too stubborn you've got to be as flexible as possible 
and you've got to resist the temptation to be inflexible and i know that pisces is generally speaking a flexible sign but at the moment there is this inflexible streak which you somehow have to get out of um, because once you can get away from it then i think that you can really help the people around you um, get on with each other and this might might include your community i said that the community and your neighbors could be a problem but if you use judgment and wisdom you can get around this problem and you can um yeah you can be a peacemaker and that is it those are my forecasts for the 12 signs and what i'm going to do now is look at today monday july the 15th 2022 sorry monday july the 15th 2024 from the perspective of the I Ching. So I asked the question, what is Monday going to be like for those watching the I Ching segment of this video? And the first hexagram I got was number 35, progress. So this is a good hexagram, at least on the face of it. And it suggests that today we do have the opportunity, perhaps, of making good progress. But it's progress that may actually be hard work. And I think that there are certain risks here we might be in too much of a hurry to make things happen and in the first instance i think that we have to stop and ask ourselves what are we doing you know is is this really the right approach and it might actually be necessary to just pause and work out what is happening and i suppose this may reflect the fact that astrologically it is a rather difficult day uh, we've got that mars conjunct uranus conjunct algol things can just happen that we hadn't planned for and if we just decide that we just want to get on with it uh, don't ask questions <laughs> don't consider what could go wrong then I do think that things could actually go wrong very quickly. So the first thing we have to do today is just pause, stop what we're doing and just accept that short term, the environment we in, we're in might not be very helpful and might not be very supportive. And then as we go on i think we can perhaps start to consider what might need to be done we get an idea about how we can make progress but still we have to be very careful and we need to make sure that we do do it right you know there are certain there are ways of making progress which are correct which are in accord with the time but there are other ways which are just inappropriate and could just get ourselves into trouble. And uh, so we, I think we need to just move forward very, very carefully and just be ready to stop if, if there's any sign that things are going wrong. So that's the way it's working. I mean, I think there will then be a, mo a moment where we finally get it right, where we finally understand what needs to be done, and then we can start moving forward again. So I think that today, in terms of progress, it's, it's going to be really stop, go, stop, go, perhaps more stops than go. And if in doubt, we should just wait and 
wait for the situation to clarify. So um, it's just important to be to be relaxed about things and not to be in a hurry and to be patient and of course to use um, an abundance of caution. And you know what we're talking about is a number of moving lines. You know it is quite an active hexagram as far as moving lines. You know, the, the bottom line moves, the third line, the fourth. Sorry, the bottom line moves, the fourth line moves, the fifth line moves, sixth line moves. The sixth line is actually quite interesting. It is saying that we actually can, in the end, we can take. An initiative we can make real progress but there is a big but here it's a kind of progress which is not going to make us any friends at all we're going to be uh, not very sympathetic in our approach we might try but we're not going to succeed we're going to come over as being unreasonable as being pushy, as perhaps being obnoxious. So is that the kind of impression you want to make? Well, it might well have to be the impression you make. So if you're in a situation where you're dealing with a difficult situation, difficult people, um, it's perhaps a conflict that can't be avoided, then sure, that's the right thing to do. Um, you know, the, the I Ching, I think, refers to something like you make progress with the horns, with your, you know, you're like the bull, you're in an aggressive posture. That's how you make progress. And if you take, if you have that kind of posture, you're certainly not going to make any friends, but you will get results. So you have to ask yourself, is it worth the effort? Or perhaps you just want to just bide your time it's a difficult day yeah you want to make progress but is is today the right day for doing it anyway with all those four moving lines we do get we do move to a different hexagram and the hexagram we move to is hexagram number three which is difficulty at the beginning now that sounds a bit of a problem but it's kind of positive because it's saying, yeah, we're in a situation where things were difficult, but only at the beginning. It doesn't say difficulty at the end. And so if we keep trying, we use our sensitivity, we understand the difficulties of the times in which we're living, then eventually it looks as if we can make progress. And there is a view that the way we get make progress is by getting assistance. We have to wait, perhaps, for the right people to show up. The right people do show up in the end. It may take a bit of time. But when they do show up, then, and finally then, perhaps we have to wait, then we start to make progress. Then we can actually realise the, pr- the promise of a previous hexagram, which was progress. So with the right help, with the right friends, we will eventually make the kind of progress that we're looking for. But it's just very important to be patient. And if in doubt, it might just be best to sort of hang back. Uh, I don't think there's there's any hurry. And we just have to take into account the difficulties of the times we're living and in particular the fact that we've got this Mars Uranus conjunction conjunct Algol and I think maybe these uh, hexagrams are are reflecting what is actually going on up there in the sky although of course they are independent oracles they're just looking at things from a different view and now I want to go back to Donald Trump and just see what was uh, what was going on. Um, so there, of course, is uh, is Donald Trump top right, and 
so we need to just look first of all at what was happening at the time of the shooting i i'm not actually sure what time the shooting was i've seen 611 i've seen 613 i've seen 615 yeah it was around quarter past 6 um on saturday july the 13th in butler pennsylvania and just looking at the chart of the shooting and the things that really come to mind for me is that the fact that we had a mars uranus conjunction obviously now that mars uranus conjunction is not exact it's uh was what uh, how far off it was almost a degree but it just shows the power of this conjunction between Mars and Uranus. As it comes together, we have this thing called an orb. They don't have to, Mars and Uranus do not have to be exactly on each other to have an impact. So that's the main thing going on. But what else is happening in that chart? It's a last quarter moon. Uh, I mean, it really is a last quarter moon. Um, there is the moon at 21.42 Libra, and there's the sun at... Sorry, I got that wrong. I mean, a first quarter moon. Sorry. It's a first quarter moon. So we, we've just had the new moon just over a week ago. And so the... Uh, the moon, as you can see from the sky, if you've been watching, the moon has been getting bigger and waxing moon. And now the, the moon are exactly, pretty much exactly square each other. So that means that we need to consider what the state of that moon is. Now, OK, if you're interested in Charon, you might notice that Charon is... Um, opposition making sort of making a t-square with this moon uh, I suppose you can see that in terms of perhaps a wound I mean that's one way of looking at it but what I would prefer to do is look at it in terms of the of terms of midpoints so if we look at the the midpoints because they're so close they will occupy similar or, or even identical midpoints because they are so close. So let's just home in on the midpoints. You can see that the Sun is square, the Mars-Saturn midpoint. It's also, also square the Pluto-Hades midpoint. So you could associate Mars Saturn with death. Um, I think when I was looking at the weekend, um, what was happening on the weekend a few videos ago, you know, the Sun was certainly square the Mars Saturn midpoint. I think I pointed that out. It's it's a kind of deadly time. It is about death. It's about restriction. So that's the Sun. Then you look at the Moon. The Moon likewise is the Moon is opposition the Mars Saturn midpoint. And it's opposition the Pluto Hades midpoint. So that square of the, that Sun Moon square was hitting two very important midpoints. Certainly, the Mars Saturn midpoint is really important. I think the Pluto Hades. Okay, you may not be into hypothetical planets, but Pluto Hades is about death and. Um, potentially destruction as well. So two very difficult midpoints. So let me now just look at look at those midpoints from the perspective of the ninety degree dial, because I, th I think it's just so important that there was a first quarter moon, an exact first quarter moon. So uh, we'll make that a bit smaller. Um, so. We'll look at the 90 degree dial, show you what I mean. 
So you can see, because they're on a 90 degree dial, just remember conjunctions, squares and oppositions have become conjunctions. So a square will be shown as a conjunction. An opposition will be shown as a conjunction. Semi-squares and sesquiquadrates will be shown as oppositions uh, on the 90 degree dial. So let's just put the sun and the moon on the, on the pointer. And there you can see that's this is the the picture around the around the sun and the moon and so the sun and the moon there you can see they're on the pluto hades midpoint and they're on the mars saturn midpoint um, so from a midpoint perspective i think that you know we really see what's you know we see the underlying picture so let's uh, let's now turn to Trump's chart. I mean, that's what we're what we're interested in, and what was what was actually happening to him at the at the time of at the time of the shooting. So here's Donald Trump's natal chart, and uh, on the outer wheel we have got. Um, we've got the event i mean i probably got it wrong 6 11 p.m but it's not going to make a big difference the ascendant's going to mid heaven is going to shift a little but uh, uh maybe it was 6 13 maybe 6 15 um so we've got trump's chart in the middle and so there was trump's mid heaven 24 22 taurus so we know in general you know not just today but overall Trump has got Uranus on his midheaven. And so this was a time when you're when Trump's in the news. You know, we know he's he's in the news because of his legal stuff, um, his debate with Joe Biden, and, and of course now with the shooting. But it this was just a, a very specific event in terms of a wider trend. He, him being completely dominant in terms of the news flow and then mars came along as a trigger so there it is we had mars sat mars uranus conjunction right on his midheaven and in fact you know, the exact conjunction is of course on monday uh is is, is today that's so how the shooting was actually two days ago but mars and uranus were still pretty close to each other and here is his natal mars Natal Mars is at 2647. I mean, this is kind of what I was picking up on. So Uranus was square his natal Mars, and Mars was also square his natal Mars. Again, not exactly. This is a reminder, but we shouldn't just be looking at exact aspects. As aspects have an orb, they come into focus, and then they go out of focus. But if, you're, if it's only one degree away, then you know this is might might be when you would perhaps expect something to happen. Um, now, from a Placidus point of view, Saturn has technically, if you if you if you take Trump's ascendant as twenty nine degrees fifty eight Leo, you could say that Saturn is moving through his seventh house. And the seventh house represents enemies from a Placidus perspective. So if we take a Placid, a Placidus seventh house, if you use whole, if you use whole signs, Saturn is moving through his eighth house, which is of course the house of death, and Saturn is starting to get close to his eighth house, but it's gone retrograde. So Saturn will not cross his eighth house cusp. Um, I think we 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 can exaggerate the connection between the eighth house cusp and death i don't want to go to i don't want to go over the top on it but it's just a reminder with saturn in pisces in his placidus is moving from that seventh to eighth there's from a placidus point of view saturn is on the borderlines between the seventh and the eighth it's where the seventh becomes the eighth where your enemies perhaps reach the stage where they want to kill you i suppose that's one way of that's one way of looking at it. So 
those really were the main aspects going on in in terms of Trump's chart. Um, you can see that he had the sun was fairly close to his Saturn. Uh, Saturn the sun was applying to his Saturn. So this might have been for him a real sort of wake up call, I suppose. You know, Trump is a Gemini. Geminis can have all sorts of ideas and theories and it's all in the mind. But this sort of brings it home, doesn't it? I mean, nearly getting killed. Um, you know, I I mean, I know we've had this bravado, but Sun hitting his Saturn, he was nearly killed. And Trump, I mean, I think is someone who does take his security seriously. I, um, here's someone who I think was on record as saying he was a germaphobe. Um, he's perhaps interesting, someone who doesn't really like taking risks, but this brings it home to him. It's not a fantasy anymore. Gemini having to having to deal with with a reality of of himself as a political figure. Um, being president of the United States uh, is a dangerous job. I mean, if statistically it is a dangerous job. I mean. It's probably got a higher death rate in terms of being murdered than most other jobs, if you actually do the statistics. I mean, I know presidential assassinations are rare, but they do happen. And of course, Ronald Reagan was nearly killed. So it is a dangerous job. And perhaps he's realizing it, realizing what the dangers really, really are like. And I suppose he's already realizing that when he was asking for more security. And this is not something... Uh, I believe he he was given at least from his from his perspective, and there are other ways to look at this chart. I thought I would look at the here's the shooting. Um, so there's the there's that's so over Trump shooting. I, I was interested in the pre the prenatal chart looking at the lunation uh, before this happened so uh, let's just look at the look at the new moon the, because we just we're just coming out of the new moon remember it's the first quarter moon so it's 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 uh, so this is the new moon before remember there was a new moon on july the 5th and i've set this for Butler, Pennsylvania, and I don't think that this chart is uh, necessarily particularly amazing. The, this is the, the July the fifth new moon. Um, you've got the south node on the midheaven. I put Lilith there. I don't really look at Lilith, but somehow I've just clicked Lilith and you had Lilith conjunct the south node at the time of that moon and it's fairly close to the midheaven. Uh, you can read into that what you like. But there's there's a new moon on at 14 Cancer. Now that new moon is, of course, very close to the United States' new moon. And so, because this is, this is July the 5th, so it's happening right after... Um, Independence Day and so that's got to be important at some level and the new moon at 14 Cancer is relevant to Donald Trump if you actually look at his solar return so here is here is Trump's solar return for his solar return for 2024 uh, so his solar return has 14 degrees, 15 cancer rising. Now, one commenter on this channel had suggested that the fact that his solar return has 14 cancer rising, which is, of course, pretty close to the degree of um, the United States' son, is an indication that he will be elected president in November. But... This new moon, just before the shooting, also picks up his. Yeah, you know, it picks up his ascent. So it may also be connected with the shooting. I mean, I think, of course, the general consensus at the moment is 
But as a result of this shooting and that incredible picture uh, where he was able to sort of, I don't know how, how he got that picture, you know, sort of echoes of the Iwo Jima raising it, the American flag and the security uh, cordon and the fist. I mean, I, I don't know how he got that shot. I mean, that shot, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it does seem, doesn't it? <laughs> He's getting closer to the White House, isn't he? And the fact that uh, that new moon was on Donald Trump's solar return um, really, st that is that is pretty incredible. There's also a lunar return to consider. So the lunar return, which, you know, every month you have a lunar return uh, when the moon returns to where it was when you were born. And so here's the lunar return for... Uh, the period just before he was shot. So this is a lunar return set for June the 21st, 2024. And this is a very spectacular lunar return because we have Uranus rising. We have the ascendant at 2758. We have Uranus rising fairly close to Algol on the ascendant for his lunar return. Plus we have Pluto on the midheaven. So Pluto on the midheaven, Uranus on the ascendant. This suggests that this lunar return is dramatic. The next month, the month ahead, is also going to be really quite, quite dramatic. So that that really is quite, quite st stunning. Quite really is quite impressive. Now. In terms of, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going all over the place here. In terms of Trump's uh, annual perfections, I mean, I think this is sort of Hellenistic technique. When I was learning astrology in the 1980s, people didn't really use perfections perhaps as much as they do now. But going back to Trump's natal chart, a point to make about this chart is that in terms of his annual ruler, you know, it, it cycles through all the signs every, what's it, every, every 12 years. So Trump has just had his 78th birthday. So, you know, when you're born, your annual perfection is covered by your rising sign. And so if you take... Uh, if you okay some people say he might have virgo rising but if you and i'm pretty sure he has leo rising so if you say he's got leo rising then when he's born that year first year of life is covered by leo and then it cycles through every 12 years so when he was 12 it's covered by leo when he's 24 it's covered by leo and when it's when he was 72 it's covered by leo and so now he's 78 you go six signs on. So 78, he's covered by the opposite sign of Leo, which is Aquarius. So the thing about Aquarius, in terms of you know my understanding of how to deal with uh, annual rulers, you know, Hellenistic astrology is not my thing, really. I, I it's it sort of happened the, the explosion in Hellenistic. Uh, Astrology sort of happened, uh, I don't know, 20 years ago, and I was sort of a bit set in my ways by the time we had this Hellenistic explosion. But still, uh, Mar he's got Mars at 26 Leo. So his Mars is opposition Aquarius. So Aquarius suddenly becomes an important sign for him and its ruler as well. But Aquarius becomes an important sign. Mars is opposition Aquarius. And so that Mars becomes very prominent. And so it's kind of interesting that shortly after his birthday, as Uranus squares his Mars, as Mars squares his Mars, he becomes vulnerable to a, a Mars event. So I, I think I thought that was um, something that uh, is certainly worth noting. Then we have the shooter 
we have his name. Uh, apparently his name is Thomas Matthew Crooks. And we even, we even have a birthday for him. Um, he's a Virgo. And at first I just saw that I tried to work out his chart. We knew he was 20 years old. So I thought, well, at least we knew where his, roughly where his Pluto was. But uh, now we... Now we have a now we have a chart for the shooter, which uh, there's his solar arc direction. But where's the chart for the shooter? I I did have his shooter. So he was he was born on. Uh, let's just. Let's, uh, sorry, what? Okay, here is his chart. He was born on September the 20th, 20, 2003. Uh, obviously, I don't have a time of birth for him. I don't have a place of birth for him. I think he was sort of registered in Bessel. Because he was a registered Republican. And so here's the chart of the shooter. And when I saw this chart, as they say, I, do they say goosebumps? We don't say goosebumps in British English, but something got me with this chart. Um, so September the 20th, 2003, the first thing I was looking at was the fact that he had Pluto in at 17, 22 Sagittarius. So his Pluto was opposition um, was opposition Trump's son vaguely and conjunct Trump's moon so I suppose from a generational perspective you've got these people who are sort of 20 years old they've got their Pluto conjunct Trump's moon and they, these are the people who may be really antagonistic towards Trump or at least he picked it up his Pluto but we have to remember what actually happened. You know, what was it all about astrologically? And Trump got shot on a Mars-Uranus conjunction. Now, what do we notice about Thomas Matthew Crook's chart? And this is what really hit me, is the fact that <laughs> Thomas Matthew Crooks has a Mars conjunction or had a Mars conjunct Uranus in his chart. So... I found that quite amazing. I mean, almost scarily amazing. Maybe that's just me. But he is was obviously someone who was really very sensitive to the Mars-Uranus cycle. And so on a, just as a Mars-Uranus conjunction was forming, he got it into his head that he wanted to kill Trump. So that just really does show how the Mars-Uranus conjunction is is working. I mean, that's that really that really triggered him. I mean, we don't have a time of birth for him. I I I did look at his solar arc directions. I, I didn't see anything desperately impressive with his solar solar arc directions, except for the fact that. If you look at his solar arc directed Neptune, so there's there's Neptune when he was born. His solar arc directed Neptune was at a one degree eight Pisces. So what had happened is his solar arc directed Neptune had has just re fairly recently gone over his Mars Uranus conjunction. So perhaps something happened in the, over the last year or two which radicalized him, perhaps or turned him into a killer so we don't know what was we don't know what was going on you know politically he sounds rather confused i mean i've had read that he was a democrat and then he moved then he became a registered republican and he had a particular t-shirt relating to some firearms group so i don't know it's difficult to work out exactly what's going on here we don't have we don't have a time of birth for him 
And finally, I want to consider the Biden horoscope, in particular the Biden inauguration chart. So this is a chart in which Biden became president. This is the legal inauguration of Biden. And uh, I also want to, oh, sorry, I also want to consider the United States chart. I do want to mention that as well. So that's Biden's chart. And sorry, that's a Biden inauguration chart. And so having that exact Mars-Uranus conjunction, it's coming up again. This is saying something about Biden's presidency, what kind of events Biden is attracting. And we have, you know, we have um, obviously the United States and NATO's war against Russia, which is getting a bit scary with that Mars-Uranus conjunction. And it's just a time of increased instability and it's all starting to come together and you know from a solar arc point of view you know saturn it's saturn is sort of has been moving towards the square of mars uranus of the mars uranus conjunction so i mean it's it's um it's fairly uh, it's fairly exact at the moment. I suppose a year ago it would have been more exact. But there is, yeah, the Mars-Uranus conjunction. And it's just, that's why that Mars-Uranus conjunction t- today is going to be so important because it chimes with the Biden presidency. And looking at, looking at Biden's chart, uh, Here's Biden. Uh, Biden has got Uranus on his seventh house cusp. Uh, he's got uh, Saturn on his seventh, you know, seventh house cusp. So Biden is kind of projecting perhaps instability onto the rest of the world. It's not me that's unstable. It's not me creating instability. It's Donald Trump creating the instability. It's Russia creating instability. Look at what, look at what the Soviets. Sorry, look at look at what the Russians are doing. So there is a certain sense of projection there. And then we have Biden saying, just recently saying these infamous words, as Biden said, "We're done talking about the debate. It's time to put Trump in a bullseye." Now I'm sure that Trump's words didn't have any impact on the shooter but sorry not Trump's words Biden's words didn't have any impact on the shooter but it's still feeding into the general collective atmosphere isn't it and so people who are unstable are going to be very influenced by this I mean this is how stochastic terrorism works and so with Biden with Uranus on the descendant he's sort of attracting this but he thinks he's standing up against it he thinks he's creating a, um, a more stable world. He thinks that uh, Trump is the problem. It's Trump causing the problems. But in fact, it's just projection. And I suppose this also reflects the... It's also reflected in the United States chart. So if we look at the... If we look at the USA's chart, uh, here is the USA's chart. Now, assuming we've got the time of birth correct, the time of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, you know, Uranus on the seventh house cusp, but you don't see or recognise the fact that you may be causing the problem, but in fact it's creeping up behind you. And I suppose we can. this ref, is reflected you know, by many of the wars that the United States is getting involved in and that has got involved in. The fact that the United States goes on and on about the war against terror, but in fact itself is something of a terrorist state, for example, blowing up the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Now, as far as what was happening to the United States when the um, when this assassination attempt happened, now this was a big event, by the way. I, I'm convinced it was a big event. This was a huge event. I mean, I think everyone is convinced uh, it's kind of changed everything. And of course, um, it makes it much, much more likely that Trump is going to be elected. Um, but 
you know, here is uh, the United States' moon. Uh, now this lilac is now coming up. I've just set this up, and now I see that the moon, the United States' moon is opposition lilac. You tell me what that means. Um, but Mars, the Mars-Uranus conjunction it, as a 26 Taurus is now moving towards a square with the United States' moon. And so, and I think this is the first sign. This is perhaps the beginning. And, I, you know, I always warned in my videos, this is going to be a long, hot summer. The moon can be the American people. And it's kind of started, hasn't it? And again, we see... We see the moon opposition, black moon, lilac. I mean, as I said, you, you work out what that means. And uh, incidentally, Uranus goes stationary at the end of... Um, when does it go stationary? At the, uh, it goes stationary at 2715 uh, at... Was that first of... What day of the week is... What, what, it's either... Goes Uranus goes stationary. Um, let me tell you when that is on September the first. And Uranus goes stationary on September the first at twenty seven fifteen Taurus. The United States is moon, assuming the signing of the Declaration of Independence happened at five ten p.m. Is it twenty seven ten Aquarius? So what's happening is Uranus is coming station is about to get station going stationary retrograde right square to the United States moon again it's going to be a long hot summer and I think the charts really do show it okay thank you very much for listening to me um, I hope you find this video of interest if you did enjoy the video I would be really grateful if you were to indicate that you like it. Uh, if you're not subscribed, I'd be super grateful if you were to subscribe. And if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. So thank you very much for listening and I will talk to you again tomorrow.